Welcome to my garden on this beautiful spring day. It's like April 27th or so. I need to check the calendar. And I have almost everything planted. I just have a few other little things to tuck in to my garden beds. But I want to show you where we're at here at the end of April. No more frost is forecasted. We have been frost free for about a month now and it's finally getting to where nights are in the upper 40s if not in the 50s here in Georgia in the United States so I'm going to show you what's growing on and give you a tour of each of these beds and a couple other beds that are in the sun and a little bit back in the shade garden there this is my first bed. Uh, it does get some good sun in the afternoon and in the morning, but here in the middle of the day, it is dappled shade, as you can see. Uh, pardon the mess on the side of the house. We're doing some demo in our basement, so we are gonna get a dumpster here soon and throw all that away. But I have some tomatoes right here that have doubled in size since we planted. This is a Bella Rosa. It's gonna be a determinate tomato with big, not big, but like slicer sized fruit. And then I have a sun gold cherry tomato, a marigold tucked back there. That is a sparky French marigold, It'd be cute and small. And I had a marigold right here and yesterday I found it had been cut off at the base, kind of like a cutworm attack, but nothing else is harmed in this bed yet. <laughs> so otherwise I have some open space in the front that I'm gonna put melons. I have some Hale's Best cantaloupe germinating and I plan to tuck some cantaloupe right here in the front and then along the middle I have some scrawny little peppers that my cat bit the top off of when they were seedlings so they're my worst looking peppers but they're not dying off they're actually surviving and behind that I have tucked in some basil some uh, beets are on the far side here different kinds touchstone gold Robin and Detroit Beats. Those are my second round and they're actually looking pretty good. Along the back, I have a couple types of zinnia. I'm trying the, uh, it's a semi-dwarf zinnia I got from Dollar Tree. Here's the second bed and I wanted to get a little closer for you guys, so I'm holding it. Let me know if you prefer being closer or if you like the stillness of a tripod. I have a similar format here in the second bed. I've got a couple tomatoes. These are both Brandywine Red and they are looking really healthy. I started some the year before last and they got diseased before I even planted them in the garden. <laughs> so I went ahead and mulched them because we've had a lot of rain in the last couple of weeks and I wanted to give them a good chance of avoiding that splashback, hopefully avoiding some disease. I grew Brandywine Red my first year gardening in just a kind of a fluke. They did great and they tasted amazing. They're a big red slicer. I, I need to look at my notes, but I think my, my tomatoes were close to a pound. Some of them I would love to get some good Brandywines this year. And just like the other bed, I had a marigold right there, a Kilimanjaro marigold and the pests decapitated it like two days after planting, but they left the sparky French marigold alone in the corner so far. I had a tough time keeping marigolds alive last year too from pests, but I am so excited about this row here of beets. They're small but mighty. I leave them in their clusters. So like there are two beets here, one beet there, and as they get roots last spring I was able to just pull them they were big enough and then I left the smaller ones and they grew so I have all these beets it's my first round some of them struggle to stay upright I'm not sure why but they seem to correct themselves if they're happy I have some Thumbelina zinnias here which I loved last year they were a dwarf zinnia but they have significant size bloom so for a little bud vase they are just perfect and I'm hoping to keep the powdery mildew at bay with my zinnias I went ahead and did some more basil here you can see a little cluster they did great in this amount of sun last year this semi shaded protected area of the garden is like the sweet spot for my basil because it doesn't bolt as quickly as the basil I have in my full sun beds and then in the back, I have some big Cracker Jack marigolds. They're not big yet, but 
if the pests let me have them, they are going to be like three feet tall <laughs> and they're bright orange or bright yellow. And last year I missed them so much because of the pest issue. And I just took it for granted how easy I had it the first couple years growing them. They're really nice in bouquets. I don't mind the marigold smell at all. And they have good vase life, honestly. So this is my second bed. It is fully planted out. And when the beets are done, I think my succession sowing is going to be either more melons or lima beans or edamame. Something really easy that I don't have to take care of because my goal this summer is autopilot garden. <laughs> I've got my irrigation set up. I'm gonna mulch here in maybe a month or so, if not sooner, and just take as little time out here as possible because I'm really busy this summer. This is my third bed and it's really different than what I've ever done before. So in the back half, you see my elephant garlic. I received elephant garlic bulbs from my parents four years ago, three years ago, and I have been just replanting most of it every year. So I've really multiplied how many elephant garlics I have. And some of them are really sizing up. Look how thick that is. That is a good size stock. They're so easy. If you haven't grown garlic, it's literally easier than herbs. It, 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 you just throw it in the ground, forget about it. And then like six to eight months later, you harvest. <laughs> so there, oh, I see my first scape. I've been looking for garlic scapes almost every time I'm out here. That's the first one right here. So this is a flower stock. My dad said he leaves them to flower and that it doesn't really affect the root size for him. So I may, I may do that just to see them flower, but usually I cut off the scape. And I haven't gotten the courage to eat the scape. People love garlic scapes for pesto and for sauteing. So maybe I'll let some bloom, maybe I'll cut some off, maybe I'll harvest some. I have plenty of elephant garlic. Each one's gonna make a scape. They should stay in the bed until mid-June. And just like with the other bed, I'll probably replace them with something that I don't have to take care of. It's a little bit shadier back here, so it might, it might just be flowers. <laughs> Nothing too crazy. I have a couple basil, well, basil right there. This little guy looks like a basil, but it is actually sesame. There's a sesame and there's a sesame. We're growing black sesame from in my gardener and he transplanted well. I have some short stuff sunflowers. I've grown them before, but I didn't give them a good sun. So I'm excited that they'll have this area. This should be enough sun to get a, a nice head from them. Next door, we've got some gomfrina. We've got a sun gold sunflower. It's like a multi-head, fluffy-faced sunflower. Got another strawberry fields gomfrina. And I've got my dahlias transplanted. My three dahlias, they all took. And they're correcting themselves. They were growing really crookedly. And the lower stem is still crooked. You see that purple? It's still crooked, but now it's growing up. So I'm happy. I may, I may have to stake them. I never did pinch them because they, they look pretty bushy to me. Now I have this open space right here. I need to do something with. Last year I had peppers in this bed and the production was fine, but it wasn't as good as my sunnier beds. So I don't know what I'll put here. Let me know if you have any ideas. I've got a lot of seeds. <laughs> I have like this area, probably a, it's a good size, two foot by three foot space. Give me some ideas on what to put here if you have any. This pretty bed is my early spring bed I'm calling it in my head I have all sorts of cool season things in here I have these snow peas that are climbing well having to train them every day they are blooming as of like last week or the week before I haven't seen any baby peas yet let me know if you spot any I guess we could call this one a baby pea this is the first bloom wow I'm zoomed in I don't know how there we go. Look at this little guy. There's a pea. 
I love snap peas and snow peas. So these are my snow peas. I've had very little aphid pressure on these for some reason. There's a little songbird that is really loud. It's cute, but he likes to sit on the fence back here. Here are my other ones. Oh, there's one without the bloom. I'm telling you, this happened like overnight. So we've got some good pea production. This is plenty of peas for us. About eight feet over here. Now in the bed, I have just tucked in some cucumbers because cucumbers don't mind a little bit of shade. I have to get my second round of cucumbers in early. This is where I put some. I put some over there. So they'll be climbing up the trellis in, the, in a month and that's just about when the peas will be done. I put in some Boston pickling and homemade pickle variety cucumbers, but I have to get cu cucumbers in early or else the pickle worms get them if, if they're still out and about here at the end of June. Well, maybe it's the end of July. That's when my pickle worms show up. I've got some lettuce here and if you've watched my other garden tours, you've known they've had some stunting issues that they are overcoming. They're really pretty now that they're growing. My oak leaf. I've planted in other places and I think that pack just had really bad germination. It's getting old. It's like four years old. The arugula is really stunted. I'll show you my better arugula patch later. This is the uh, Merlot lettuce from Baker Creek. It's gorgeous. I'm going to try to save seeds from it this year because I'm almost out. And then um, I've got a little row of sweet basil that I have pinched and it's coming in with more leaves as we would hope. Here's a better example. So I pinched off the center and they're doubling. And then I have some lettuce here, but man, my writing is really faint on the tag. It's, I think this is, I'll have to look at my notes. It's almost like a romaine shaped lettuce. And here's another couple, but it's probably time for me to fertilize them next week when the rain slows down with some nitrogen. Along the back of this bed, I do have some flowers. I love the bachelor buttons. They don't need a ton of sun to be pretty. And, and they get nice and big. I need to cut some now that the, the, they've dried off from the rain. And then down here, I have some bachelor buttons that I direct sewed that are just way behind. Thank goodness my mom gave me this plant. And I have some Tetra dill. It's more of a heat tolerant dill variety that's actually doing pretty well. And I've had dill grow to be a great size in this bed, so I know it can take the shade. And then I have one little borage. They take forever to germinate, but he is putting out two leaves now, which I'm optimistic he's going to actually do something. Borage is surprisingly big, so I didn't want to give it a ton of space. Another shot of the peas. So if you want to look back, there are the four beds that I call the quad beds. So you can hear a train nearby. I like the sounds of the train. But here's my shade garden. We're going to go in and look at the things that I've added recently. Here in my herb bed, I have some amazing chives that I still haven't cooked with. And I need to. We, I just made a loaf of bread last night and I should have come and gotten some chives and added it to butter. Gar like garlic chive butter. That's really good. But neighboring that, I have recently added all these green onions that I started from seed this year. They're all doing fine. Green onions handle transplants so well. And there's my beautiful sorrel. Look at that. It is doing so well back here. It really loves the shade. And that's my best parsley, but I think he's bolting. Look at that odd stem. That is weird. This is an overwintered parsley. So I have more coming in for the year, but that's a weird looking stem. Coming back to what should have been my flower wall, you know, I lost a lot, like two thirds of my snapdragons I lost in the deep freeze we had. I would have had snapdragons all through here, like two rows of them. But I have like five plants that made it and they are budding up. So my spring is not lost. Stay tuned for snapdragon photos. But I do have nasturtiums. 
and they like the shade so that's why I put them back here they don't they don't like the the true Georgia summers but I have a few germination was really bad on nasturtiums this year I don't know why I've never had such bad germination I soaked the seeds for 24 hours and I'm thinking maybe I maybe I over soaked them I don't know but I still have five that'll be enough they get pretty big So this is my little flower patch. My kale tunnel is still doing great. There's bolting going on, but my kale is not bitter at all. And this, I have to say, the row cover is an utter game changer. I have not had any caterpillars yet on here. I sprayed BT once because I thought I saw a white moth get in while I was harvesting or white butterfly, you know, those cabbage butterflies. I think there's some slug damage, but other than that, we are just rolling in kale. And in front of that, this, this row gets the most sun of the shade garden. Uh, I've transplanted my strawberry fields gomfrina. And then my, my straw flowers are looking amazing. They're huge. They're way bigger than they were in the spot I had them last year. So I already know this amount of sun is way better than what I gave them the year before. I wanted to show you the seedlings I have growing right now. These are the only ones left I'm taking care of. And it's pretty bright, so I'm going to try to keep it in focus. But I apologize if I messed up on that. Um, to help it stay in focus, I'll leave everything on the table. But I have some melon seedlings here. A sugar baby watermelon that is not looking so good. So I direct sowed some yesterday. I've got some zucchini. Black Beauty zucchini. I'm only going to keep one. This one's probably the one I'll keep. My husband is not a zucchini fan. But I just, I have one big pot. And I was thinking, well, if I could put this in the pot and cover it, I might be able to keep the vine bore off of it. My spicy glow basil, I keep wanting to pick it up, but I want to stay in focus. But my spicy glow basil is bolting. So I don't know if I'll plant it because it bolted in the April heat, which is not good. But the basil smells really good. And here's an update on the failed California Wonder Bell peppers. None of mine did well this year. It was really odd. I, I don't have problem growing peppers, but this variety gave me run for my money this year. Glad I had to actually buy some. This is my cucumelon. Also, very sad. Definitely not going to make it. It's looking more and more mottled by the day. And then I'm testing some of my compost. I've got some bush beans growing. I bought some compost from a company I'd never used before, and so I'm just testing it out before I put it in the pots and garden. These are um, a sweetie marrow, a sweetie tomato, cherry tomato. I haven't planted because it's a little bit small. And I have some sparky French marigolds. And these are nasturtiums that never came up. So I I don't know. Very bad nasturtium germination year. I, I really should probably just give up on them. Um, the first round that didn't germinate, when I dumped out the dirt and looked at it, the seeds were being attacked by critters. So I'm a little afraid to look at those and see what's going on inside. For many of us, this is probably the most exciting type of bed to look at because it's full sun and it has lots of classic summer things going on here. I've direct sowed sugar baby watermelon and honey rock cantaloupe here in the front and I want them to just vine everywhere. But they're both smaller petite melons so they won't take up too much space. And then along my trellis, I have basil and some sparky French marigolds tucked in alongside some California Wonder Bells and um, banana peppers and lessia peppers. My tomatoes over here are, I've got a lot in this bed actually. I have, I've got to learn them here. I've got my super sweet 100 uh, right here. Only need one of those. And then I have a sun gold. And then I have a cucumber. This is a Be It Alpha cucumber. Looking so good. And then three more tomatoes. I have a brandy wine here in the full sun because I really want that flavor. And then I have Bella Rosa and Celebrity. 
tomatoes, which I need to get their trellis thing set up. They're determinate, but they still need some help. So I'll get that figured out. So here's the bed from the back. Now my other full sun bed is planted out and looking so pretty. I have a sun gold sunflower. I have some state fair zinnias, which are my favorite. I have a Jubilee watermelon, a beet that grew on its own from fall. <laughs> I have my lettuce patch and arugula. This I direct sowed right about one month ago. It's amazing what good sun and perfect soil does compared to my other lettuce patches. <laughs> this is actually usable. So I've started picking off of my Marvel of Four Seasons, Black Seeded Simpson, and my oak leaf has grown so much this week and then my arugula. So we have some days here in the 70s, and I know last year my lettuce was bitter by Memorial Day, so I'm hoping this full sun lettuce will at least last that long, but it may not. Maybe by then my other patches will be working. I have a Cracker Jack Marigold. This is one of those big giant ones I would love to have a full-size one for cut flowers because my two years ago I did Cracker Jack Marigold and a pink State Fair Zinnia. My goodness, I had so many bouquets. So there's the other State Fair Zinnia there. And then my Lemon Queen Sunflower is looking huge. It's already starting to form, I don't know if that's a head, because this is like a five foot tall sunflower. So I hope those are more leaves, but I direct so it's another lemon queen patch right here and then here in the middle we have Minnesota midget melon it's a cantaloupe I have a another kind of watermelon there I'm blanking on the name and then in the back I have a silver slicer cucumber that's gonna grow up on the trellis after my uh, snap peas are done oh there's a ladybug I, th I think he might be eating aphids because there are a lot of aphids in here. Ladybug's way in there. Sorry, it's hard to see. This is my container garden. I wanted to show you just because everything is looking so happy. And some of the all-stars here would be like my sage, which is blooming and looking so good. I like how it's like spilling over the pot. I started this from seed a couple years ago. He likes being in a container. I think they like when it dries out. I've got my parsley for the patio, some basil and chamomile. Grew this all from seed. Chamomile, I need to start picking because I've got blooms on all my chamomile plants now. Got a bachelor button back there. This is my new fig, my little Miss Figgy fig I got for my birthday. My chocolate mint, Greek oregano, some common mint. And this is fun. This is a Prince, Purple Prince Dwarf Tomato that I bought from a nursery. I actually live near one of the people who's in the uh, Dwarf Tomato Project. I went to a nursery talk where, um, and I'm forgetting his name, that's so terrible. Um, I might put it on the screen if I remember, but he's, he's one of those names you hear in the Dwarf Tomato world. And I was shocked that he lives like in the next town over. So he grew this plant and I had to buy it, you know, it's from that guy and he helped create a lot of these dwarf tomato varieties. I think it, this one is one he really had a hand in. It's got some big blooms going on back there. It's dwarf, but it's still gonna need a cage, which I have. Anyway, that's my dwarf tomato tangent, purple prints, or I'm wrong, purple rain. I'm saying prints because it's inspired by Prince. He kept talking about Prince, like the musician. <laughs> so um, I think there's a connection there, but I'm gonna take care of this in, and that's why it's in this new container. I wanted it to have a great spot in my garden, but I didn't plan on buying one. So he got the, one of the new pots. And then over here I have lemon balm, which is just quadrupling by the day. This was microscopic last garden tour. It's actually big enough I can start picking from it. And chamomile is reseeding everywhere. <laughs> like, this is probably from the chamomile last spring. Somehow it survived through all the different soils and add-ins I've done. It is still going. So if you grow chamomile, be ready. 
There's another bachelor button. Thumba Thumbelina Zinnia. Some mint. My Alma fig is coming back, mostly from the base. I'm seeing some leaves along the stem. I'm curious to see how much of these stems are just dead because of that deep freeze we had. But it's growing very well. And this pot, I'm hoping, is just going to be a little zinnia haven. It's Thumbelina zinnia. So they're small, petite plants with big flowers. I don't know what colors they'll be, but something was really eating them overnight in that rain. I may put some diatomaceous earth down. I don't know what that damage is. It's kind of lacy. Do you know what that is? Normally with slugs, they just chew it right off. And roly-polies too, but maybe that is roly-poly damage. And this is the rosemary I bought this year. So the container garden is booming. This pot is where I'm going to put my zucchini. I just need to get some more soil. Thank you for watching. If you want to see updates on how everything grows, please consider subscribing to this channel and giving this video a like. And don't forget, I need some recommendations on what to put in my bed that has a couple feet of space. Please give me some ideas. I would appreciate it. Otherwise, I hope you have a great rest of your day and thanks for watching.